This is my first attempt at 3D printing some sandals. About a month ago, I bought this spool of flexible filament. This filament is primarily made up of recycled plastic from the footwear industry. And I thought it would be really cool to see if we could turn it into a new pair of shoes. For the longest time, I wanted to 3D print a funky pair of shoes. And I think I'm finally ready. I started to brainstorm by tracing some of my decently fitting shoes and making some quick physical models based off of them. The idea was to get an entire sandal printed in one single piece. In order to achieve this, I cut up the straps and laid the model flat on my scanner. I then brought it into my CAD software, sliced it, and printed it in really flexible filament. It's a TPE of an 82A shore hardness. Technically, I printed the shoe face down. That way, I would be able to print all the pieces that have different thicknesses without the need of any support material. Since sandals are notoriously not the most ergonomic or comfortable, super science tech-based pair of shoe, I felt that I could get away with a lot. In this particular prototype, the straps loop and intertwine and only require a little bit of glue and perhaps a single 3D pen welded joint. These sandals actually ended up being really similar in feel to jelly sandals or like a denser version of a cheap flip-flop. And I wore them out and they stayed on my feet. They didn't make me trip while I was walking and even stayed together during a little light running. And that's pretty much all I'm looking for in a sandal. I will say that they were, they turned out to be perhaps a little bit too flexible in that they don't click and clack like flip-flops do. They kind of sort of just wobble. Like I said, these white sandals were just a prototype with a material that I print all the time, all the time. I'm pretty comfortable printing this material since I've used it so much. Now it's time for the real deal. The recycled filament is a little different to the one I'm used to printing with. It's not as elastic, which is a big difference between the filament I previously used. It's approximately of a 90A short hardness versus an 82A short hardness. And it also requires a heated bed, which frightens the heck out of me because in my mind that just means adhesion problems. And for the other filament, I typically don't use a heated bed. But for the sandals that I aim to use the recycled filament, I was looking to switch up the style and create more of a higher platform or flat form um, type of shoe. So a little bit more elevated. And then the worst, worst, worst warp. The worst happened. So I got this terrible, terrible warp print. The print shrunk, it warped, it detached from the bed, just basically 3D printer chaos. I still assembled it and after assembling it, I did a quick try on and it was even worse than I thought. It was essentially a brick for your feet. I used way too much infill. Also, the strap was way too tight and it was just painful to wear, honestly. Um, very bad design on my part. I tried on the physical model while I was making it and it fit well, it was loose enough, it didn't feel uncomfortable, but when you take it to reality, it just turns into something else. And to top it all off, brick print ended up making me use about half of the spool that I had bought. So at this point, it was back to the drawing board. This model was just not going to be ideal for the final print. I went back and made some changes to the actual design. I loosened the strap that went over the top of the foot and then shifted it a bit in the position of the corner as well so that it would you know kill my foot and swapped out the flat form or platform idea and decided to make flat flats instead and most importantly i reduced the infill of the print significantly i brought it down from like 80 percent to 20 percent at first it was like 80 because i thought it would give it more fullness and that's one of the main difference of between the both filaments with the white sandal i gave it an infill of 80% and it feels really comfortable and jelly-like and really full, but this filament worked better with a lower infill since it was a bit more rigid. Oh, and I also put my printer in my closet because it was receiving like a lot of cold and I thought that that's what since I figured that difference of the room and the printer bed was what was aggravating the adhesion issue situation. Maybe this was a fire hazard? And finally, I was getting some pretty good results. Over time, the filament, um, like all TPUs, 
and TPEs, it, they tend to absorb some water and it's pretty visible in the quality of one of the first print to the next print since that filament spool had been out in the room without being sealed and therefore it absorbed a good amount of water and probably also making it hard to print because i had some fails between the first sandal and the second i assembled the straps using a 3d pen on the outside so that the joint doesn't rub against my skin when i'm wearing the shoe and then sealed them in place so they don't break while i'm walking by adding a thin layer of 3d printed filament and gluing it to cover all the joints I did the same thing on the back strap and I also added some buckles which I placed in place by sealing the joint with some glue and then a 3D pen. If you see these circles that the sandal has, I was originally going for like a multi-wear shoe so that I could swap whatever I put on top of the sandal um, depending on the outfit I was wearing. Um, I didn't actually plan very well the actual plugging of the pieces. Like I thought if the circles on the bottom were larger and then the one on the top was smaller, but then I could sort of get the plug into it. Um, it would just work out and it, it didn't. It, it needed a lot more of a design effort and I think it's a good idea for the future. It's kind of like Crocs but not Crocs. So now for the fun part. I've been a fan of this amazing fashion designer um, for the longest time and I've been seeing a lot of her work and always wanted to make something like inspired by her or maybe even one of her dresses. I'd be totally down to make one of her dresses. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments. I had this idea of using this technique of layering translucent fabric and perhaps creating like a gradient and that would be really good to like personalize the sandals. So I took the picture of the dress and sort of took a portion of it and traced it in Illustrator and made it to fit ergonomically proportionally right with the sandal. Just traced it all up brought it into 3D modeling software and just extruded it. Um, I sliced it, printed it, and then started applying the fabric. This is something that I had tried before. And the attempt was to create like a back pocket for another bag that I was making. The strategy was to put masking tape on the back side of the translucent fabric. The purpose of the masking tape is so that the fabric doesn't glue to whatever surface I have it laying on. That could be a cutting mat, a paper, whatever you're using in the bottom. Then I would glue the outlines, the thin printed part to the fabric and then cut it out. It wasn't working really well since when I started to rip the masking tape, then the fabric would fray and it would look really messy and just overall bad. So this time around, I tried to do a similar approach in that I was gluing the 3D printed piece to the fabric and then cutting out the fabric. But this time I just used like a piece of eight and a half by 11 letter sized paper that's kind of saying the same thing so whenever i would glue the fabric and i would rip it off it would rip off like paper does but it would only stay or stay glued to the parts that the outline was there so if you flipped it over the paper was not visible at all it was really easy to remove the paper after um gluing it i repeated this method over and over again until i finally got the two pieces cool So the original idea was to use these little plugs to put in the back of this, like glue it like this, so that that little space right there would behave like a plug and I could sort of plug it into these holes. And in this sandal, I did these little slits so that I could insert um, these into there. And this would be glued to this, like that. After that, I contemplated how to place it on the sandal. I tried it in a bunch of different ways because they all look pretty cool. In the end, I opted for this placement, having that pop of blue in the center. And here is the final sandal. Oh. 
Honestly, this was not great design on my part, even with the adjustments that I made to the straps to make them looser. Um, after a while, they still hurt. The white sandals are super comfortable. They don't hurt in the pinky area or the sole. I mean, they're just really good slides and it could be that the type of the material and the design mesh well together. For the black sandals, that design would work really well in the softer plastic and that's something that I noticed that maybe the design that I made didn't work as well with that harder plastic. You live and you learn. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this bandana, uh, I designed it a while ago. These are just like individually 3D printed pieces that then you sort of assemble together. I'll put the link in my bio in case you want to print it for yourself. This is not the last time I'm going to make shoes. I'm definitely making more. Different shoe types even. I don't know. Let me know what you want to see. Okay, bye. I'm wearing a lot of triangles today.